Umar ibn Abdul Aziz radiyallahu ta'ala anhu is one of the most fascinating people in Islamic history because he is unanimously by consensus the first mujaddid the first reviver of this ummah after the companions of the Prophet sallallahu and he is included in Khulafa al-Rashidin amongst the righteous guided Khulafa even though he's not a sahabi he just ascends in rank in every way and it's such a fascinating story because like when we're talking about Sa'd ibn Wa'ad radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, we're talking about a man who really didn't live long, right? He died at either 39 or 40. He was the governor of Medina from 25 to 32, and then becomes the Khalifa in the last two years of his life. So his Khilafah is only about two years. than anyone that you would ever meet. Someone whose knowledge was unparalleled. Someone whose asceticism, his zuhd was unparalleled. And so his death is going to be extraordinary. And I wanted to include it because it is very much so connected to what we should be aspiring to as we're hearing all of these stories of the Sahaba. Now, before I, I get into his, you know, there's a narration that when Salman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was dying, Salman al-Farisi was dying, that he had musk in his room, good smells in his room. And he laid down and he said, tonight there are creatures that are going to be coming to me and they smell fragrances, but they don't eat food. Meaning he was ready for the malaika, ready for the angels to come and to take his soul. And that's one of the signs of Hisn al-Khitam. One of the signs of a good ending is that you kind of feel it at the end and you prepare yourself. Now, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz had a great fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like his grandfather, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, despite everything amazing that he did and despite all of the praise that he received for what he did until the very last moment, he's worried about going to hellfire. He's worried about Jahannam, though no one would speak to them in that vein, in that spirit. So he calls a friend of his who is a great scholar by the name of Al-Raja ibn Haywa. Al-Raja ibn Haywa, uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, actually is a Ghazawi. He's a scholar from Gaza in Palestine. Uh, amazing scholar of Islam and a contemporary of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz gives him instructions. He says, listen, when I die, I want you to be the one to receive my body in the grave. And when I'm there, I want you to uncover my face. If you find that in the grave, I'm already facing the Qibla, then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave me there for Allah has granted me Al-Jannah. And if you find otherwise, then insist on the people to ask Allah to forgive me and have mercy on me. So it's something between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not something, a practice that, you know, we go into the graves and if they're facing the Qibla, we say Alhamdulillah, though we would say Alhamdulillah regardless, but that we would assume otherwise in a different situation. So he gives that instruction to him. And then he calls for his wife and his children. Uh, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz had a very righteous wife, Fatima bint Abdul Malik radiallahu ta'ala anha, rahimahullah. Wonderful, uh, righteous woman that he would praise often. And he uh, embraces her and he bids her farewell with an ayah from the Qur'an, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَى الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compensates the patient without any limit. So gives her the glad tidings of what she would receive should she maintain patience in the case of his death. Then suddenly he looks up and his gaze was fixed on something. And he asks his family to leave. He says, Ukhruju anni. He asks them to leave. So they leave, but they stay at the door and they peek in and they can hear what Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is saying. And they said that a light entered into the room and Umar says the following. He says, Marhaban bihadihi al wujuh. Welcome to these beautiful faces. Alati laysat bi wujuhi insin walajan. These faces that don't belong to human beings or jinn. 